Facebook. What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Mullet Cast, the podcast where business and pleasure collide. My name is Evan Balmer. Uh, I think you switched your mic off by accident, actually. Yes, you did. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> Make sure yours is on, too. No. Okay, testing. There you go. Awesome. That's go a on. fitting start to today, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the rain's screwing with everybody. <laughs> All right, go for it. Totally. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Mullet Cast, the podcast where business and pleasure collide. My name is Evan Balmer. Uh, my co-host, we'll give him a shout-out, Mike Mercia. He's on child care duty today because his child care is closed. Um, today we're joined by Jim Lenskold. Jim is the board president, excuse me, chairman of the board and president of the Asbury Park Music Foundation and also the president of the Lenskold Group. What's going on, Jim? How you doing? All right. How you doing, Evan? Good, thanks. Uh, so check out the Asbury Music Foundation at asburyparkmusiclives.org on Facebook at Asbury Park Music Lives. Um, Jim, you can find his company online at lenskold, L-E-N-S-K-O-L-D dot com. And follow him on Instagram at Tiki underscore Jim. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Nice uh, way to wrap up the end of the year, right? For sure. Um, I love seeing you. Um, we only met recently. And sometimes you meet people that you just feel like you connect with like right away. And for me, like my passion in life's always been music. And I got the sense that you're pretty similar right away. Oh, totally, totally. I think we sat down for a half hour meeting and an hour and a half le- later we said, <laughs> OK, let's, uh, let's get, go to work. That's right, totally. <laughs> um, so that's really cool. So let's talk a little bit before we jump into the foundation um, about your background and how you got to the Lens Gold Group. You, were a M- you got your MBA at Rutgers. Yep. You yep. somehow wound up at AT and T. Yep. How did Actually. that happen exactly? Uh, that was just the job coming out of college. Um, it was a great opportunity. You know, AT and T had just gotten from the big monopoly to competitive. Uh, real intense time. They brought on a lot of new, fresh energy, and uh, you know, it was a good eight year run. Right. Yeah. Um, out of the run, you wrote a book. Um, it's about the path uh, marketing ROI. Yep. The Path to Campaign, Customer, and Corporate Profitability. Yep. And for those who don't know, ROI stands for Return on Investment. That's right. It's a financial term, so not everyone knows that one. So I was checking out – it actually is very well-reviewed on Amazon. Yeah. Um, So people should go pick it up on Amazon and learn about ROI. But what was interesting, and I didn't really think about it, is I guess there was a time people didn't really look at ROI. Oh, no. Uh, uh, Not the typical path, but back at AT AT&T, we kind of got – the marketing team was kind of forced to run financials, mm-hmm. and I became the guy that kind of said, look, this is not going to right, lead to the right decisions, and so it kind of reshaped it, and then marketing and finance had this great partnership. And then all these years later, when I split out on my own, I had my own consulting firm, I realized, you know, the one thing we didn't have back then was all this data. Right. So I kind of said, oh, wait a second, if we have this data and we apply what we did back at at t and people are not doing this today, right. and uh, the book absolutely came out at the right time, um, and even now, there's still – I wouldn't say it's common practice that every company does it. Right. But they all recognize the need for it and they kind of just try to say, you know, instead of trying to build brand and awareness and, and not generate sales, they go, it would be really good if all this stuff added up and we sold more. Right. What a concept, huh? It is, <laughs> totally. So it is crazy because now – Data is so readily available. That's right. Right? And That's right. so where did you find it back then? Like now, I could look at my phone. I could see. Oh, we, my gosh. It was we know hard. how many people are watching the Mullicast yeah. right now. You know, yeah. So we have access to data like crazy. Absolutely. But, it, yeah. it was it – was, um, and even today, there's still some issues when you're trying to bring the data from all these different media sources together. Mm. It's still challenging. Um, yeah, obviously the digital is what you get tons of. And the, and the problem now is almost it went from not enough data to too much data. Now right. everyone has metrics going out and they go, but at the end of the day, how do I know how to drive more sales uh, out of this? And right. and then I back it up and I try to make the whole process about it, really the key role of marketing is influencing perceptions and behaviors. And what's the buyer's journey look like? So that's where you try to use this data to say, hey, we, we have social media and people are engaging, but – does it lead to anything else? Do they shop for our brand? Do they go look for it? And and how far do they go? If they buy, will they buy again? Right. So all that is the financial outcomes tied to behaviors, which you try to tie back to marketing. That's cool. Yeah. So is that the kind of service you provide with the Lens Gold Group right yeah, now yeah. for clients? And, and it's um, it's everything from the analytics to the process. Mm-hmm. So that you could say, you know, you have to get people to understand once they get this information, how do we act on it? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, that's an amazing 
actually bit of knowledge for a, for a band to have, right? Um, because, it's it's similar in ways, right? Yeah. Because they can look at all right, um, we got a positive review in this paper or on this fan, on this website. Yeah. What what was the sales effect of that? Or yeah, we yeah. played a gig in this town. What happened? You right. Know? And the challenge is. Um, even in in the work I do, I do a lot of large corporate ba- brands, right. right? These global brands, and sometimes to bring it down to a local business is hard because the the with the big brands, when you have a lot of data, it's statistically valid, and mm-hmm. you can do tons of analytics. A small company, it would cost more to do the analytics than they're spending on the marketing. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so you don't do it. And then when you bring it down to a single band, it gets challenging too. But I will say, what's interesting now uh, on the music business. Mm-hmm is that they're recognizing the value of data. So these right. labels are buying analytic companies that specialize in this area. Right. Um, they're looking for trends. They have some uh, some technologies now that will kind of pop and say, hey, this is the next best band based on listens and everything. Right. And then um, – but it's still it's still hard to bring it down to the, the single band. And, uh, you right. know, it's, it's an area that uh, I, I'm focusing a lot on to try to understand, you know, can I marry the – the passion for music and the passion for Asbury Park musicians <laughs> right. with what I know on the analytics side. That's so cool. uh, got a couple things in the works there. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. So somehow you arrived at the Asbury Park Music Foundation. Right. Um, the foundation, I believe, was launched around 2011. That's right. Mainly initially to preserve Asbury Park as a music destination, right? That's right, or right. Pre- preserve the history of Asbury Park music. Yep, yep. And I wasn't there uh, as the on the foundation at the time. I was there drifting around music clubs and everything. But, right. <laughs> but it was a lot different than people know it today. And a lot mm-hmm. of people have seen that go through. The music was just coming back. I believe at the time, from what I heard, you know, at that time, the Stone Pony was only open a couple times a month. What? And so, and people were starting to come back and... Um, Tom Gilmer was a real leader in this area and a lot mm. of, you know, it was other people too, but um, making sure that, you know, every time another restaurant came in, there was more people, the venues could open a little bit more and right. just make sure that the music was part of that recovery. Right. And it certainly worked. And there was a point in time then in its history where when John Liedersdorf brought in the Lake House Music Academy, mm. he really wanted to be inclusive of everyone in Asbury. Right. And so the foundation was a good partner to say, hey, Let's raise funds, and and really the youth music education became kind of the the core of what we now do today. Gotcha. Um, so you joined um, the board of the foundation in 2016 and became chairman in July of 2017. Right, right. So what was your introduction? How did you connect with Asbury Park Music Foundation? Yeah, I'll admit that I kind of um, was trying to volunteer to see if I get some shows for free. Right. Thought I'd work the door or something, and right. then all of a sudden I'm on the board. And, but, but, uh, but what happened was I tried to get a T-shirt. Yeah, yeah I wanted just something for and 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 actually I don't get into very many shows free now either. Mm. So that didn't work at all. But right. well, you know, um, chairman of the board, people kind of assume like, right. well, this guy can afford to cough up a couple bucks. Yeah, you know, it doesn't on. work that way. What you end up doing is a lot of work for free. Right, right. So, totally. um, but what happened? Uh, I think a lot of things just lined up. I was also at the same time looking at some of the nonprofit organizations and see how I could get involved. I'd moved my business to Asbury Park in 2015. Right. And um, and so I, I was um, – uh, it just happened that there was – I met the right people and there was a lot of turnover happening in that year leading up to when I got introduced. So the board was changing. Uh, some of the staff was changing and it just needed a little bit of a, another rebuild. Right. It kind, kind of got through a transition once. And so from the time I came on to now – uh, I think half the board is turned over and is new. So we still have some of the legacy people, which right. is critical for us. Um, all the staff is new. Mm-hmm. Um, there's probably 30 or 40 volunteers that really do a lot of work to make this foundation you know, come together. Right. And some had been involved earlier, but most of them are new. So it was this whole new energy. And, and, and really what I think why I ended up taking the, the chairman role, why I was asked is um, – what they really needed at the time was the business sense. And mm. so that's where kind of running my own business for 20 years, having that background in the analytics and the discipline, right. uh, it just was the right thing at the right time. So, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I thought I had a good handle on what the foundation does, but looking around the website, uh, it's insane. Like the amount of you know yeah. programs, events, like it's crazy. Um, so they do programs for to help support the Asbury Park youth Yes. Um, through – 
um, various education programs. What are some of those? So, um, right, and and a good portion of those programs are funded through grants and foundations. But then that's you know when people see us out at events, that's also really letting us expand there. But right. kind of our key areas is. Um, as much as we can, try to get youth music education in, uh, get the music education into the schools right. because then everyone gets exposed, especially at younger ages. And so there's um, Hope Charter Schools, a couple other uh, programs where we're in the schools. Right. Um, then get the after school programs. Now people that have an interest are kind of getting a little bit more education right. in groups um, or just at, you know, we're at the Boys and Girls Club with the Hip Hop Institute. So kids can come every week and and uh, make their own mixes, they're writing songs, they're That's producing. Cool. We have a sound booth over there that they record in. Right. Um, you know, they're getting exposed to the technology. So it's in school, after school. And then um, for those kids with a real strong passion and, and talent and interest, we put them into scholarships and get them into the Lake House Music Academy. And that's, that's awesome. where you really have that's the you know it's all our focus is always life changing. So mm. social skills, life skills are always part of what we're doing. Right. But when we get them there and they're in bands, um, they're growing up with kids from all different neighborhoods together. They, they and and you know at the end of the day they're there to make music. They're right. Just, and um, um, so you know they get in, engaged and then. Um, we're just starting now to take t to another tier. Another program that Lake House has is artist development, right. where they get songwriting coaching and all that. So there's a couple kids that really are showing that That's aptitude. Cool. So we now have, have moved up into that area too. I, I know a kid. So I'm like entrenched in Lake House too. Yeah. My my daughter started there, yeah. and then now I'm there. Um, and it's really it is really a special place. Like yeah. there's some amazing things going on. Not only like, I mean, the instructors are some of the most talented people I've ever Agreed. seen. Um, and the kids are amazing. So my daughter had the chance to go to a songwriting camp this summer. So I know yeah. the camps are another thing that kids can get a scholarship right. for. Um, and there was a kid in her camp that's probably 12, 11. This kid was laying down tracks like insane. Yeah. Like, I think I know who you're talking showed about. Showed up yeah. with his laptop and he was just track after track. This kid was cranking out yes. and then other people were writing lyrics. So, so it yeah. was an amazing experience for these kids like to spend a week working together and then actually recording their song at the end of Right, and right, camp, you know? and um, I think it's the same kid, but one one uh, one of the students in particular who had been got exposed in Hope Academy, so in school, but then was in the the scholarship program. Um, we had this uh, event where Wyclef Jean came down right. to Asbury Park Music Foundation for four hours, and this was the, one of the best events we ever did. He spent a, a bit of time sitting in the studio showing the kids his writing process. And I am not kidding. Mm -hmm. He is in there just strumming on a guitar. He comes out, plays it back. And we heard all these parts. And there was some small little thing in the middle. And he asked the guy in the studio to loop that. Right. And then he goes back in and plays over it. And he goes, that's a song. And, I, and we're all going, <laughs> oh, my gosh, that was 10 minutes. Right. So, but... Um, but then we had just got this new beat bus. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about right. that in a second. I'll finish the, the story here. Is um, So on that, we had the um, the stems, the, the pieces of, of uh, Wyclef's tracks. Right. And we let the kids remix a song. That's killer. And the kid you're talking about went in there, no training on this iPad. Right. He, um, he goes in here and he's remixing this song and as uh, the song Warrior. And um, in 20 minutes... We're playing it back. It happened to be the one kid I popped in and I said, "Let me listen as you do it." And right. I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" They uh, they pick his his tracks to go in. They play it for Wyclef because then the next thing we did with Wyclef was we move into our uh, performance space and we had about 50 kids in there to hear right. him like talk. He plays it um, and he was going to play along with it. The kid and he goes, "This track is too good." And he was not kidding. <laughs> he goes, "This could be a legitimate mix right. that I put out." So awesome, and it was a very different mix for the song. Uh -huh. And so then he he we then put him in, made sure he's getting the scholarship. He's right. going to be one of our artist development. That's kids as really well, cool. So. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, look, yeah. those are life changing moments, yeah. right? For a kid to be able to sit down with a Grammy award winning artist, see how he creates right. a track, and then work with him, right? right. Like interact with him right. and mix his track. That's insane, right? When Wyclef came back for the Asbury Park Music and Film Festival, he played at the Stone Pony, and he not only invited that kid to come up and play, right? There was three others. And you'd think, you know, we know as a foundation, we're so thankful. But the one person he was working with from the foundation, the next day, he gets a call from Wyclef 
thanking him, <laughs> thanking us, right. and he was giving assignments to the kids. He goes, I want this kid to do this, you know. So, so like, cool. we're fortunate to have someone, uh, you know, that's gave their time and really cares. So. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you think about it, probably the direction the world was going is music programs were disappearing from yeah. schools, right? Like, that's there's right. no more, uh, you know, back in the day, every every school had a music room with a piano and that's a teacher, right. and, like, that stuff's gone, man. Yeah. Um, so to bring that back, like, for kids that never would have experienced that, right. that's awesome. It's hard to find funding. Right. One of the programs we do at uh, the after school at Mount Carmel had been state-funded, and uh, a little over a year ago... I think it was uh, August, and they go, oh, we're not ha- going to have funding. The program's going, and they called us. We hadn't been doing any programming over there, right? and we quickly scrambled. We got Interfaith Neighbors and a couple other groups to come in and, and pull the funding together. So we we saved the program that was disappearing, and now we've taken our responsibility for funding that year to year. Wow. so That's cool. Yeah. Um, and then, so tell us about the Beat Bus. Oh, yeah, so the Beat Bus is a fun one. So this one, um, it's a school bus that has been – gutted rebuilt inside it has 10 workstations that um kids and and 10 ipads with um uh there's these midi controllers that they're kind of interesting ones but they'll they convert they can become a keyboard they snap together oh, right. i wish i remember the name of it you know what um <laughs> but it's um it's this high tech you know it's the ipad that has the 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 all the the key software on right. it garage band a couple other things and then um, it's got these controllers that they could, you know, they could do beats, and then it could switch to a piano and do different things. That's cool. And it's, um, so this guy Ryan uh, takes it around to different schools, and it, it is, you know, it's a studio too. Mm-hmm. It, it actually has a sound booth in the back. They can go in and record right. live instruments or the the controllers. And he's doing a lot of different programs. It's, it's every other Friday. It's at the Hip Hop Institute in, uh, in Asbury Park. Right. So it parks out front and lets the kids come and go. And That's uh, cool. And yeah, I saw it out there yeah. the other day. Yeah. It also doubles as backstage. Uh, that I, was recently, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had That's a right. chance to hop on the bus. One of the big gigs, uh, yeah. That's yeah. Right. It that became was the green sweet. room. <laughs> yeah, what, where was that one? Well, that was at the. So that was at uh, Danny Clinch's gallery. Oh, that's right, at the Transparent Gallery. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So uh, I had yeah. the chance to get on the bus. The bus is right. sweet. I definitely recommend people check that out. Yeah, yeah. It's at, a, at a lot of the events we do. Right. Yeah. Um, and then part of what the foundation has expanded into doing is helping local Asbury artists as well, not just kids, but like yeah, working yeah. musicians. So we've always wanted to be able to give back. So one of our great fund- fundraising opportunities is through the events we run, which is also one of our missions too, mm-hmm. right? So we have um, the events at Springwood Park right. for, for the summer. Um, Asbury Park Live is the one in front of Mogo on, yep. the, on the beach. That's Water, a logo, uh, Mogo and Watermark. And then we do the Asbury Park concert bands. But one, it gives the, the artists a chance to play. And two, it gives, you know, the community comes out for free events. And then they're buying T-shirts or they're, right. or they're giving their donations. And again, then we take that and we were able to fund a, a Latin music camp over the summer. So, you know, it's, it's a cycle. As if we could get the artists paid a little bit of money. Yeah. We could get the people to enjoy it and give a little bit. Right. And then we give the youth music programs. And the youth music programs are taught. By musicians in town who are also, you know, <laughs> right. it's this, it's, it's keeping that economy totally. going. And then Dude, those kids can graduate yeah. to be performers someday, yeah. you know, yeah. which is cool. And actually, like the Mogo one's killer. Like I, that's a great place to sit on that's the lawn, true. throw down a couple Korean tacos, and, I agree, uh, and listen to some music. That's I've right. done that. That's a good one. I love that one. Yeah. Um, and then this year you had a new event, right? The Asbury Park. What was it? The, the holiday show. Uh, a very Asbury holiday show it was just uh, two or three weeks ago. Right. On a Sunday evening, this is the first year. It's always hard to get these programs up and running. Mm-hmm. It was at the Paramount Theater. Uh, there was no major headliner, but a lot of good good you know names that are big here. Tangent right. Blues Band, The Weaklings, uh, Williams Honor, Remember Jones. Right. Um, so we were expecting if we could get that half full, we would cover the cost and have some money for, for the, the programs. Mm-hmm. And it sold out a week in advance. So we were thrilled. That's killer. A lot of work. There was a great crew that, that managed that whole event right. and, uh, and pulled it off. But it was a lot of work. It was right. months of uh, pretty intense time. That's cool. Yeah. And then I didn't even realize is one of my favorite local bands as well, which are not even local bands. one of my favorite bands, yeah, period. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I know they played at Newark Airport. Yeah. And I had no clue <laughs> that that was actually one of your foundation events as well. So um, we are real fortunate. Again, you get these these corporations that um, approach us sometimes. So Tito's uh, the Vodka called us up, I want to say January, February, and they said, we like what's happening in Asbury Park. You know, we want to figure out if we can do an event with you. And 
we were going back and forth and brainstorming on different things. And a couple weeks later, they said, oh, we got it. We have this really cool idea. Mm. What would you think about setting up a residency in the Newark airport? So um, – the, the interesting, so I went up and met with them. They flew in from Austin. And, and it was met, a CBGB's. Well, that was the, right? the interesting yeah. part was it was CBGB's. So I'm not kidding. Before I agreed to it, I had to go around and ask a, a bunch <laughs> of the different bands. I said, one, would you play the Newark Airport? Right. Because you can't sell tickets. You can't, you're uh-huh. going to be, you, you know, you're basically playing to a captive audience. Right. What do you think? And they go, yeah, sure. I said, and I thought this could go either way. And I said, <laughs> would you play a CBGB's in the airport? Because... Right. If you were invited to play the real CBGBs, you'd be thrilled. But right. a fake one, I don't know. <laughs> and they go, and I'm not kidding. They were there was a couple that were I don't know, but they go, you know what? There's something cool about that. Right, Why totally. don't we do it? So we it had cool. a we had twice a week for ten weeks. So twenty bands played the airport all summer long. That's cool. Um, and they the feedback was just great. You brought joy to the worst place in New Jersey. <laughs> <That's> true, <laughs> exactly. That's but it would like. be, um, you know, we had we had one of our our tech guys up there working the shows and he goes you know people are rushing to the airport uh, rushing by the the, the restaurant to right. get to a, a, tur- a gate they'd back up and they'd stop and they'd listen they're looking at their watch and like they wanted to sit down totally. and listen right. so uh but it was great exposure for us tito's was just a you know a great partner and and you know they covered the cost of the bands and they gave us a very nice donation that's funding uh, some of the programs we're doing that's so awesome are it's you, a win-win all around that's cool are you going to do that again there is interest. Uh, we're, we're waiting to see. It's, we, and the question is whether we do the same thing or whether we do something different. Right. And, you know, the only downside was uh, the hour to hour and a half of getting through security <laughs> right. that you all had to, that everyone had to do. That's right. Um, That's the one thing probably yeah. you mentioned that, that maybe yeah. for, you know, no one accounted for. Right? Oh, it my like, gosh. Oh, it was, man. it was, uh, there was only, I think, once where it got really bad. There was some, uh, some mishap, and our, the names weren't there, so they waited right. an, hour, an hour before they went inside. Oh, wow. But if people are in the airport, and if you find the CBGBs, uh, you'll see up on the stage there's a piano, but there's also this column right. where every artist that's played there signs it. That's cool. And Asbury Park has over half of those signatures. No They've only done a few shows before that. That's crazy. So That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, that was every band's dream, is to get your sticker like up on the that's wall right. of CBGBs. <laughs> right. I think that's what held the place together. I think so. <laughs> The end, man. But um, there is uh, there is a uh, the band the Burns. We do have uh, we set up a video. We recorded the whole entire show, right? And it was a Saturday morning of Labor Day, so it was kind of a quiet travel day. Uh-huh. Um, and I thought I went up for that that one show, and um, so ten o'clock in the morning it starts. And they you know they're supposed to play fifty minutes, take a twenty minute break, and right. play fifty minutes. They just they took a break. They were off for thirty seconds, and someone you know Joey walked back up and starts playing something on the piano, and oh, that's they cool. just did not take a break and right. did not repeat a song. It was supposed to be you could do two sets of the same song. Oh, wow. So uh, it's it's out there on the on the Carousel Arts page. Okay. So all right, cool. Uh, yeah, check that out. So how did you get into music? Like what what part has music played in your life? Oh, it's always been huge. It's always and I, I would say it's a combination of. Um, this strong need to have live music. It's almost like the energy mm-hmm. feeding in and keeping you going. And then um, also I have this passion for new, like something I haven't heard. I, you know, I, I'm not what I, – I, I love playing my old classics, but mm-hmm. if I could hear something new. And so as Asbury was coming back, you know, I kind of shifted to – I'd come in to see bands I know, right. little by little kind of seeing, you know, who's, who else is out there. So you have Battery Electric and Van Saders out there for a long time. And right. then – then it was getting so much that I was like, oh, I had my office down in Manasquan, and I just moved it up to Asbury Park. <laughs> right. And, uh, and it just made it possible to just, you know, just be there all the time. That's cool. And I would say, you know, the, the great thing about Asbury is, you know, it's a, it's a small enough community that is tight that eventually you get to know everyone. Mm-hmm. And it's a, there, there has to be something of a mindset there, right? Because people will come in and, and relocate there. Most of them are from New Jersey, but maybe from other areas. And what I find is... And it's even the way we we connected too is somehow you you meet people and you're le- you're just instantly friends. It's right. not like you go, oh, there's this guy. Mm. So all of a sudden, the next time, you know, um, it's it, you, you you feel like you've known someone for years right away. And, right. And so it's been great. You know, all the local bands are, have been great to get to know. And that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So who did you listen to growing up? Like who were some of your influences early on? Oh, I was all over the place from Aerosmith and. Uh, you know the Led Zeppelin and and who and all those mm-hmm. to eventually and and really a lot of the heavy classics, um, 
I did see in the convention hall, I saw Iron Maiden op- open up for Judas Priest. No way. So I, was, I did a little bit of the heavy metal <laughs> run. Nice. Um, the Clash, I also saw in Asbury. I was That's big there. Insane. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. And then, uh, but then, you know, I, I think I, just that passion for new music, you right. know, you jump in as much as I get into reggae or just, um, you know, different world music. Right. Um, it's just different stuff. I, you know, it's just more interesting to me. Got big into alt country for a long time, still love that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, and actually I would say I was kind of late to the game, but, uh, you know, there's all this stuff in hip hop and it's just a good song is a good song. And I think, I think you have to get mentally, you have to not kind of put things in buckets. Right. And all of a sudden you hear things differently. Yeah. And so it's exciting. So I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, who were some of your Asbury bands? That you're into. That could be a long list, but uh, <laughs> because the, no, there, there's just so many good stuff. Um, you know, the band that, that that I've been, you know, a couple of them I, I help and I, I mm-hmm. try to see what I could do. I try just be a sounding board, a business guy. And right. So, you know, there's um, but the leads I've, I've worked with a long time and been been close with. Mm-hmm. Um, lately, I've been spending seeing the Burns a lot lately. Mercury Brothers, right. also good ones. Um, but Black Suburbia Group is the one on the hip hop side that um, you know it's Drew the Recluse is kind of his, his own. But there's just so much there, and um, so in fact that's an interesting one too on the on the foundation side where we try to, you know, our room is rented out, right? right. So people run their own shows, and just because we hadn't been really ready for a production side of it, we're starting to get a little bit more into that now. Yep. But one thing we we recognize, and it's not just us now. The Saint was kind of the first to say, hey. Why is there not hip hop in Asbury Park? Right. So they cut the break there, and we said, you know, well, well here we want to help, and we've got the space. So we set up uh, the first Friday of every month. We have uh, Suburbia Friday nights. Yep, and we let Black Suburbia uh, curate it. They're open to everyone kind of coming in. They've been mm-hmm. doing a great job with the lineups. I mean, show after show is great. And the goal was, you know, we need to build the audience, right? And then inspire the other venues. And it's, again, it's not just us, but. Little by little, you, now you have the the Asbury Park Yacht Club, Langosta stepping in. Right. So, it's just great music, and you know the the thing for me was uh, last year at the Asbury Music Awards, uh, Black Suburbia Group played, and that was a they were the the only one in in even close to that genre in mm-hmm. that mix, and the crowd went nuts. So right. it's it's the audience is ready for this. Right. So why are we not just making sure? And I. I truly think one of the more interesting things happening in Asbury Park now is the collaborations. Yep. Because it's another, you know, it's it's genre busting in a sense. Totally. Uh, so you've got Bulletproof Belve and Maddie Carlock coming together. Um, Drew has been, uh, Drew Barkley's played with Cold Seas. Um, you've got a lot of stuff. I th- and we're going to we're gonna have some interesting things in 2019 to try to encourage that too. That's so. cool. And actually Christian, uh, who's running the, the board for us here, when he found out you were from the foundation and, and that was the venue, he had mentioned he'd been to some killer yeah. shows in there. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I saw Lex Rex do yep. her, uh, like an album release show there. Yep. I've uh, I've seen Chris Rockwell do some performances. Yeah, Chris has been great. Yeah, you mentioned uh, another artist, another hip hop artist that I'd also seen there because there was a couple of acts. Uh, Bulletproof Belve might have played there, or um, I'm trying to remember, it was such a well. Drew a the Recluse is Drew yes. Barkley. Yeah, yeah. Drew the Recluse. So he's he they, they that their family kind of runs the Black Suburbia group, which is great. They do a lot. You know, it's a, actually a multiple artists kind right. of. Like a share in the stage, yeah, collect cool. Yeah, I do have to say it's an amazing thing what you do. Like, like <laughs> you, like you, you had me at you bring joy at the Newark Airport. I'm yeah, an instant right. fan. Yeah, like, yeah. I was uh, just at that Miles. Mess. Nobody's another one. He actually drew and Miles played the uh, the airport with us. We made sure we had a good mix. We had Polka up there. She's very talented. She's played uh, Springwood Park for us too. Right, um, Drea. So yeah, yeah. Is there a name of the venue or is it just the Asbury Park Music Foundation? So we, yeah. Yeah, we, we go kind of let it be the um, abbreviated APMF, which we try not to do that with the foundation, but we d- will typically refer to it as the APMF performance space. Gotcha. Uh, we j- it just we we actually tried having a name for it, and people said it's too confusing. <laughs> right. It's hard enough to find. Let's not make it yeah, hard. Yeah. To, you know, let's no, just people cool. know it as the foundation. Yeah. It's a good space. I mean, I happen to be. I mean, I work down the road, and I'm at Lake House a lot, so yeah. I always see people camped out going into gigs there. Yeah. And then you tipped me off to the Girlzilla event. Oh, that which was, was a great event. Really cool. Oh um, my gosh. A Saturday afternoon, I think it was the start of November, around then. Right. A Saturday afternoon, and it was packed, and it was a an all female lineup. Um, in terms of the the the, the front person, um, uh, it was just 
uh, Kate dressed up. She uh, that was kind of the the, uh, the the group that kind of built the around. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were really. I hadn't heard of them Avery before. Mandeville they were played, really yeah. good. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And, and it was yeah, it was stellar performances and uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, those are the, it just it's the different types of events. I mean, right. let's make sure we can do something for everyone. You know, our downside is it's a non-alcoholic place, but that makes the upside of it's an all-age place. Right. Which is and cool. you need some of that, especially college kids. You know, they need to be able to be able to see some good music. So. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, that's a killer spot for people to, and so it's available if people wanted to organize their own shows. Yeah, it's a rental, and right. it, you know, most Fridays and Saturdays there's something going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, we do now have a new series that's kind of a little bit more uh, acoustic and and pulling out some of the classic uh, artists that, that that have been around here on Sundays. Um, so it's it's not a, a set schedule, but about every month there's these Sunday sessions, and they're right. Sundays, usually three to five. Steve Forbert played Bobby Bandiera. Oh, that's cool. Got some interesting people lined up for uh, for starting. I think February kicks back in February through May. Gotcha. Is that Matt Smith's show that you're talking about? Oh, that's another one that actually happens. So this is where I tell you <laughs> the good thing is. Like, you know, it, being in the foundation, if there's a need and there's an opportunity, you just jump on it. So um, different than that. So Sunday Sessions is um, is just kind of acoustic. It sets up – we set up as a cafe. There's tables and you kind of can sit there and enjoy it. But, uh, you know, um, but the Matt Smith Show is on Monday evenings. It's a live stream. And it's called One More with Brian Erickson. Right. And it's a talk show. It's a, it's a great talk show, which uh, yeah, I highly recommend checking it out. So I found out they had been up in Red Bank, and a friend of mine was on the show, and I watched this. This is a great show. And then, of course, after I watched a few episodes, it's like, why isn't this in Asbury Park? Right. Being a little selfish. <laughs> <laughs> so it's only music, you know. Right. There's either people in the who are musicians that, as the guests, or people in the business, in a sense. That's and cool. so, um, uh, but it's a great show. It runs about an hour. Um, and so oh, what happened was they were moving down to Asbury into that little place called The Outpost. And mm-hmm. just when I met them and said, oh, I'm glad you're down here, they go, oh, The Outpost is closing. Right. So we just shifted it down the road and we, we have it in our space. It's great for us because I think we're, you know, again, another way to support the local artists. Right. I think it works so well, too. Because like does. when Matt told me about it, I was like, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I watch the show occasionally. Yeah. And I'm like, it's actually quite good. It's, uh, yeah. I, the, the, I'm friends uh, with Matt, so I know yeah. Matt and Liam who run behind the scenes. Yes, exactly. Stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So you have, um, Brian Erickson with Ki- Chris Dubrow, and they're just that perfect uh, right. host co-host co- combination. That's cool. Funny, sh- funny stuff, and uh, and then you know, but the serious conversations. Right. You know, the, the one show I saw I had um, Connor Bracken from Leeds uh, was the the music artist, and um, they had Jeff Crespi, the photographer. Right. And they were in one episode. You had you know they were had a very serious conversation with Jeff because he talked about his addiction and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you had um, Connor and they're goofing off and it fit. It just flowed together. You oh, know, it cool. just, it just says it was, it, that's what you need is a good combination. Right. right? So Jeff's a dude. Um, you and I had this conversation too. Like one day I was at Asbury underground and I, I like in an hour, I probably saw like eight shows. It was yeah. sweet. Right. It was sick. <laughs> but like everywhere I looked, I saw Jeff, at the gig, I'm like, right. this dude is either someone duplicated him, you know, <laughs> yes. or, but he's literally move. <laughs> everywhere. So I started taking, trying to get pictures of him. And oh, you yeah. told me you've done that. Before I did this. Too. This I'm, I'm not kidding. It probably goes back six years at least. Right. And it was a saint. You know, it wouldn't be super crowded, but and I like to be up front. Mm. And I, I have the thing where I take a picture of every band. You know, just to kind of catalogs it at least one picture, if not totally. many. And um, but he'd always be up there front, and I'm like, who, uh, you know, I'm not kidding. Probably in three months, it was four or five shows. Right. The guy's always in my picture, so we end up talking, and uh, and after a while, I I decided I said, well, my collection's going to be always get Jeff in the picture. Right. So I have at least a hundred different bands with Je- a picture of Jeff taking pictures. That's hilarious. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, he's funny. he's literally everywhere. Like he shows is. I didn't even know were going on. Like right. I see, I follow him on Instagram, and I'm like, yeah, damn, I didn't know there. Yeah, he'll be like different, you know, yeah, venues, venues in different towns. Yeah, like, yeah. This guy's literally everywhere, man. Yeah, he's the hardest working dude. Exactly. In, uh, good quality pictures. Yeah, so very, far, very yeah. good. I've been trying. He's actually very difficult to. Uh, we've been talking a lot about having him on. Oh, uh, yeah. on the mullet cast, yeah. but schedule wise, because he's he's like literally works twenty four seven. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Um. So maybe we can pin him down. Hopefully, sometime soon. Yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. So, how can people support the foundation? Um, well, the, if you go to the website, you know, definitely look, we take donations and mm-hmm. a lot of, like even small 20, $25 donations all the way up to, you know, people will give a chunk of money if they can. Right. Um, 
it all really does go, you know, we just sat down yesterday with uh, the people at Lake House and we said, all right, we had this big holiday show. What's next? Mm-hmm. And so we're talking about how do we add a drumline program? You know, oh, this is cool. like, like that's, impre- you know, and it, 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 it really engages cool. kid a, right. at a young age. It has a competition piece and then it, it has skills. We're adding an audio technology so people could learn stage production. Right. Um, new scholarships, that artist development. I mean, we just ran down this list. And look, what will happen is we'll say, okay, we have enough funds for the top two or three, mm-hmm. and there's four or more in the queue. Right. All these small donations add up, right. and it really makes it possible. It's um, it's a tightly run organization, so, you know, it's not a lot of overhead. Right. Um, and so – so there is a donut donate button on the website. Um, that's pretty easy to yep. go through PayPal or credit card. And um, you know, if people want to volunteer, right. there's a volunteer form on there. If you're just curious, sometimes just going to an event or buying a T-shirt is enough. Right. So on the website, it's it's pretty much every way you can get involved. Yep. Um, and then on the corporate side, there's also um, sponsorship opportunities. Right. We, when we do these events, that's a nice uh, nice connection in. Right. Um, sponsors get a lot of exposure. They help us do the event. The event brings in not just good mu- you know, brings in good music, but mm-hmm. then also uh, we'll get the funding. And, That's cool and stuff. So yeah, I know you have good shirts. You have the music saved at yeah. Park. I have one yeah. of those bad boys, and um, and the sponsorship, like you said, a lot of you see a lot of local and national corporations absolutely dropping their uh, support behind you guys. Yeah, and then you're doing a lot of uh, constantly. Chasing grants, also, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Is that a big? Jump yeah, it's of- a, it's a it's a it's a big effort. Uh, you know, and, and no, it's interesting. It's not like I, that was not my history. I didn't have that background, right? Mm-hmm. You know, but um, but obviously, building a proposal and a, a pitch, it kind of makes sense to me. But what's interesting is, you know, you get funded for something that could last a school year, right. and with some exceptions, we do have a couple multi year funds. You got to go and chase that again, or sometimes you get a partial year funding. So. Right. You got to piece together that oh, this costs fifteen thousand dollars for a whole school year, mm-hmm. um, but I get a five thousand dollar grant. Where am I get? Right. And sometimes you're like, uh, don't cancel that program, but we're not funded. We're gonna borrow for a little while, and then we'll. <laughs> right. So it's a it's a constant game. That's got to be uh, rough. Like once yeah. you get a program out there, I know. obviously you don't want to. We don't want to lose anything. And, and so far, I don't think we have not had to lose a program. Um, you know, the scholarships kid, I, I think we're probably at 90 to 95% of the kids that come in just right. stay. Yep. But you have some kids that rotate out. That's cool. Uh, but there's some, been some kids in the scholarship for four years now, and they're like top tier, best, some of the best bands right. in, the, in the program. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so the whole concept of the mullet cast originally was like, we're talking to people about business and pleasure, yeah, right? Yeah. And like, it, it oddly enough, just dawned on me yesterday, like during the course of talking to different people, and mostly for me, it was like talking to bands. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you do what you love. You know <laughs> sure. what I mean? I'm like, you live the mullet life. You know right. what I'm saying? And then for some reason, it popped in my head yesterday. I'm like, you know, it. the two things shouldn't be separate, obviously. Yeah. I don't know why it took me so long in life to figure this out. But I'm like, you know, the beauty of the mullet haircut is it's one haircut, right? The, right. the, the business and pleasure live together. It's yeah. not two separate things. So you seem to live like, you know, doing what you love. Very yeah, much. yeah. Right. I mean, if you look at it, I've got a real job. Right. Um, sometimes it's hard to get to that when I'm doing the foundation right. stuff, but but I am doing the foundation. Like that's where I'm putting my time. I yeah. I, uh, I do it because I love it. Um, it's been great. You know, I am I am working some little things to try to figure out how to connect it. Right. Uh, just to see if I could bring one or the other, mm-hmm. you know, together and uh, and kind of evolve my business a little bit. But right. at the same time, this is you know, if you. Uh, you know, going out to shows as yeah. many nights a week as you can is a great thing. It is a great <laughs> you know? thing, for sure. And yeah. you look like you're at a lot. I was yeah. glancing around your Instagram. You got, you're at a lot of gigs, it looks like. Yeah, I try to I try to average three a week, right. That's which cool. is a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because I talk to other people, especially in Asbury Park. The two things that can happen is, you know, the nights you don't go out, you're missing something. But right. then you're at a show and you're missing two other shows you'd really like to be at. Right, totally. That's great. I mean, That's the cool. fact that we've reached that point, there's so much happening at one in one right. given night. You know, uh, yeah. when I talk to people outside of Asbury, I said, you know, we're a, we're a summer destination, you know, kind mm-hmm. of a, a resort type place, but the music is year round. You know, on Monday night, there's two to three live options right. in the middle of winter and every other night just gets better. Yeah, it's so. crazy. Yeah, that's what it used to be like. You know, I did a lot of shopping bands back in the day in New York, and it was like oh, yeah. it was like that. Like every club would have, you know, you were competing five, yeah. six, seven bands, and you're trying to get record people to the show. You know, right. but there's a million places to be. Right, know? right. So that's cool to have that going on in Asbury. Yeah, you know? yeah, and I, you know, um, 
uh, I guess from the foundation perspective, but even me personally, you know, you kind of feel like something's going to break in Asbury. And, and, and so I spend a lot of my time and I work with some of the artists just to say, you know, what can we do? What, what helps your numbers get up? What helps mm-hmm. you get into a festival? Right. What helps you, you know, in fact, you and I met because they're sitting here going, uh, you know, I got to sign. I'm at the point now where maybe I should sign a contract right. and a contract with um, my band, with a record label, with an artist management. Right. You know, and they need the business side of it. So, I, you know, that's something in 2019, you know, we've talked about because yeah. it'd be nice to kind of help educate support. Totally. Um, you know, I, I, it's once again, we're at South, at South by Southwest. There will not be an as well last year on the official list. I should say there's, mm-hmm. there's unofficial, a lot of unofficial music, but dentist was down there last year right. as an, the only official one that listed Asbury park as their hometown this That's year. Cool. None Actually, on the official, uh, but I think well, wishers got a, oh, uh, what? They got a gig. Their label's doing a showcase. Oh yeah, yeah. The so showcase is. Oh yeah, that's good. Right. Oh, that's right. There are some other ways in. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, that's good. So that'll be awesome. I mean, yeah, yeah. you definitely feel like Asbury's going to pop yeah. again musically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not that it it hasn't been, but I'm talking about no, like someone big to come right. out, right? That's right. You know, the you current the, artists there are the talent there is great, right? Um, and all it takes is just getting the right break and being at the right place and, and having a, kind of the infrastructure and support, whether it's the label, the, the recording yep. side of it. Um, and so, you know, that's that's kind of a, a good, fun thing to do. That's cool. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it would be yeah. awesome to see someone that, like, really, you know, grew up musically in Asbury yeah. and go make it big. You yeah. Know? That would right. be killer. Right. Um, so, all right. So interesting personal tidbit I learned right before we jumped on here is that you do, in fact, own your own mullet. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. What's up with that? That's funny, yeah. Uh, so yeah, when I when I realized, oh, the mullet cast, you always take a picture of the mullet. I said, oh, I got to bring this uh, this hat. Should I pull it out? Sure. I didn't. I didn't throw that bad boy on, man. Um, I love that people have their own mullet. That's it's fantastic. It's actually impressive. <laughs> so the funny thing, I, I guess I can put this back on. Yeah. So the funny thing about this is. Um, why I have it is kind of a strange thing, but it's become my thing now right. where uh, I was supposed to uh, go out with some friends in Las Vegas, and I couldn't make I, – I was. it didn't work out schedule-wise, and at the last minute, it did work. So right. I, ju- I got a flight, but I decided – I only told one guy I'm coming, <laughs> right. and I show up, and I have this on. I have sunglasses. I have these fake teeth I put in, and uh, – I start annoying my f- three of my friends were right. out at a club and to the point where they're moving their seats <laughs> there. Um, and it was close to a fight right. before someone like, I think I took off the glasses and they're like, let's cold. And so, <laughs> and then I decided that I had to keep doing that. So I went down to visit my, with my brother was going down to visit uh, his, his daughter at Clemson for her birthday. And uh, so I tag along not knowing and um, right. just annoying, you know. And uh, so it's my, I, I like to pull it out. It's, uh, I, I highly recommend sweet. it as a way to annoy people you're close to. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it, as long as you're willing to share that idea, I'm, I think I might take that for a test spin also. Yeah. And go out and just uh, throw on a disguise and annoy yeah. people. That'd be and as killer. I'm slowly losing my hair, this could be my, my thing. I just keep the hat on all the time. That's, right. <laughs> That's killer. Awesome. Jim, thanks for coming in today. Uh, this I appreciate has been great. you taking the time. Um, yeah. I know you're always busy also because you do dedicate like you said you have a full-time job but you dedicate a lot of time to the foundation um so i encourage people to check out the asbury park music foundation at asburyparkmusiclives.org on facebook at asbury park music lives uh follow jim on instagram at tiki t-i-k-i underscore jim uh, you can see what shows he's at. You might not recognize him out there at a gig because he could or You'll could not have this know. mullet on. You never know. I could be there. So that annoying dude that's like poking you, <laughs> just say, are you lens cold? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. it, it just might be him. Um, and then check out his business, lenscold.com. Um, we kind of gave that just a quick pass, but obviously you've had a, a, you know, a very impressive career and people can learn a lot more about you yeah. um, on there as well. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks, Evan. You got it. All right.